Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and along with my husband Jason, we are documenting our journey through IVF, our marriage and our faith. If that's something that you are interested in, make sure you click that little subscribe button. So today we are going to talk about our egg retrieval, egg retrieval results and the recovery that I've gone through over the past week. Give you a day by day how I've been feeling, any symptoms and whatnot that I had. That way, if you're experiencing the same thing, you'll know that you're not alone. So. I was a little bummed on egg retrieval day because in the past I had looked at old YouTube videos and you know the husband or the spouse gets to go in there and they get to stay with you and you know film you being all silly afterwards when you wake up and hearing the doctor tell you how many eggs you got together and it was just so awesome to get to see you know couples going through that and now with COVID it sucks because you don't so as soon as you walk in and you get checked in Basically, once they call you back, your spouse has to leave, and that's it. That's the last time you see them until they walk you out to the car. So I hope and pray that the restrictions get lifted and that this can, that we get to go back in there together. But I did remember to take some fun before and after pictures. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video that if I get put under anesthesia, I'm usually out for hours. And so I'll have some fun before and after pictures I'll insert here. I still had my phone, so luckily I was able to get those. So right after you wake up from you know being under, they want you to eat and drink something. I think that's one of the requirements that they have before you can leave. So I chose apple juice and I think goldfish, and this may just be me, um, but one of the symptoms I have from my guests going under is I get real like kind of cotton mouth. I would recommend small bites, but anytime I would try and eat a goldfish, it just, it felt like I had nothing in my mouth, so I had to always make sure and drink something. That was just odd. It's just, it's an odd feeling to not be able to feel like you can't swallow anything. So that's just one of the things that I experience, I guess, whenever I go under anesthesia. As I was having that little snack, they came in and told me how many eggs we got. Remember, I told you I had my phone, so I remember making this video and sending it to Jason and he was like, you have to put that in the video. So for your entertainment, I will put in this little video clip for you. <laughs> we got 20 eggs. We got 20. <laughs> and yes, so we got 20 eggs this time. I was so shocked and so happy because the first time we did this last year we only got 10 eggs so we doubled our eggs this time it just meant we had more chances to get hope you know our hopefully future little babies and it just it was such a relief I was so excited so after that we they walked me out to my car back to go meet Jason we drove home we got the lucky McDonald's french fries for me and I was really wanting chick-fil-a chicken nuggets we stopped there and luckily my husband was sweet and was stopped at two places for me at that point it was still hard to chew and or hard to swallow so it I felt like it took me two hours to eat that little small lunch and and I, my appetite just wasn't quite you know 100% after waking up and all that after that I just went to sleep I slept most of the afternoon I woke up to hearing Jason chopping onions and vegetables <laughs> when I did wake up I woke up really stopped up and congested and sneezing a lot and I don't typically get allergies like that and so I don't know what it was I didn't experience that last year I called the doctor just to make sure that I could take Claritin or you know some kind of allergy relief and they said yes that was fine if we had done a transfer I could not have done that but because we were just doing the egg retrieval it was fine I figured it would be I just wanted to make sure uh, once I woke up though moving around I was just really slow to move around really bloated feeling Pain was minimal. I had a few cramping, you know, feelings every once in a while, but nothing that I needed to take any Tylenol for or ibuprofen or anything. I was spotting though, so I did wear a panty liner that day. And then the other thing that I did as soon as I got home is I took a stool softener. The IVF medicine in the shots and then going under anesthesia, all of that just slows down your body. I wanted to make sure that that kind of got moving and that was also part of the bloat, that feeling, so it was just, it was more just uncomfortable because you don't feel like you're yourself yet. 
And then the best part was that my sister came over as soon as she got off work and my husband and her tag teamed and he prepped all of the food and then she came over and cooked my favorite, which is this chicken spaghetti recipe from the Magnolia cookbook. So they did that for me and I was really excited. So day one was Thursday. I took the day off just in anticipation of still being really tired. And I was, I think I slept 10 hours that night on top of sleeping a lot the afternoon. Still really bloated feeling, still um, spotting. So still wearing a panty liner. No pain that day to take another stool softener just to make sure everything was okay. Now, I did want to note the whole Coley's or stool softeners, whatever brand or type you use, it just always freaks me out. So I was just doing like one a day just to help. And I wasn't trying to go overboard. I <laughs> just wanted everything to get moving again. So the best part about day one is that's the day that you get your fertilization report. So we got that call in the morning. And again, we chose to do the ICSI method, which is where they take the egg and then they place, they inject basically the sperm with it and just to give it the best odds of fertilizing. Of the 20 eggs that we had, 15 of them were mature. And then they said 10 of those fertilized normally. There was another one that fertilized abnormally, and then there were four that fertilized, I guess a little later. So technically there were 14 that were fertilized. 10 of them just fertilized normally right off the bat, I guess. We were just counting the 10 with the potential to have 14. The day two was Friday. I did go back to work that day. Now, mind you, I am still working from home, so it was still able to be in my comfy clothes. Still bloated that day. Every once in a while, little like twinges feeling like in my stomach. Uh, no more spotting that day, so that was back to normal. So Saturday was day three. I felt pretty much back to normal by then. This was a hard day for me though because we did get our day three update call and it was not exactly the news that I wanted to hear. So on day three, they expect your cells to be between six to 10 and that's what they're looking for when they give it the grading that they do. So of the 10 slash 14 that we hoped for, of those only six were graded as good. We had one that was fair and then we had seven that were poor. One of the seven had potential to make up. It was sitting at like five cells that day and so it had the potential to keep going, um, but some of the others were only measuring about two to three cells. So, and this was a hard day because I was supposed to film that day and I just, I felt like I gave up and it was, I didn't want anything to do with, with this. I didn't want to film. I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to be in my painful emotions that day. So the first thing I did after the call and talking to Jason, I just went straight to my prayer journal. I wrote all of the emotions I was feeling, all of the questions and the whys, why us and why does this seem to be so hard? And and hard not just for us, but for any couple that's going through IVF. I, I think everybody has that question of why? Why is it so unknown? Why do we have to go through this? You know, you just have all of those questions and that was that was Saturday for me. So I just, wrote it all down, let it all out, and I chose to just spend that day in my emotions. And I think that's okay. I, I think bottling up the emotions in this process is very harmful for you emotionally to do because you're holding it all in. I think you need to have that release in some way, whether it's working out, whether it's praying, whether it's talking to a friend or to your spouse or whoever, you have to find whatever works for you to release that and get those emotions out. And just remember, the joy comes in the morning every time. So day four, nothing really to report. I felt, you know, like I said, felt back to normal. Day five was Monday and I did have to go to the doc, my OB on Monday. So as I was getting ready to leave on egg retrieval day, my doctor said that he recommended I go see my OB as soon as I could because he found a spot on my right side whenever they were doing the retrieval and wasn't sure what it was. Uh, with my history with having a leap two years ago and my history with ovarian cysts and just all of the hurdles that we've already faced, he wanted to make sure that I was okay before we tried to proceed with a transfer. He said, you need to get this checked out. So. I was able to get on, get in on Monday with my OB. She did say that nothing was wrong. It was, it just looked like a, it was like no bigger than your fingernail 
the spot was. I believe she put sodium nitrate. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she put something like that, like a little silver gel type stuff on it to help it just heal a little faster. And she said it was common to see with leaps or hysterectomies or stuff like that. So nothing to worry about. It wasn't going to impact my fertility or be able to carry a baby, anything like that. So good news there, thumbs up. That was a relief. And then Tuesday was day six. So this is the final day that we got a call and we were gonna find out how many embryos we had that made it to that blastocyst stage. All of the other calls normally come between like 10 and 11 in the morning and this call seemed to take forever. And we have five frozen embryos. Four of them were graded good and then one of them was graded fair. These were mixed emotions for me because I was thankful and super happy that we had five but I was very nervous because these are the exact same results that we got last year when we thought we had five and we ended up getting the genetic testing back and we had none because they were not gonna be viable for a pregnancy. So the nerves are definitely still there even now as we sit and wait for those results to come back. But the only thing that I keep reminding myself of is that everything is in God's hands now. We have done everything that we can do, the doctors did what they can do, and now the rest has all been up to God. We trust his timing, we trust his plan, and we trust his plan for us and for our family. With the knowledge that in the end, it, his plan for us may not be what we are hoping and praying for, and we will, we may not like it, we may be upset with it for a little while, but we will lean into that and we will choose to accept it and move forward because ultimately that's what we are here to do is follow his plan for our lives. So that is it. We are in the two week wait period right now for our genetic results. I will share those with you whenever we get them. Hopefully they will be different than last year. That is what we are praying for. If you found this video helpful and you liked it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and make sure you click that little subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and for following us along on our journey and just for being part of our family now. We wish you all the best. I am praying for you guys every single day. Take care and God bless.